Hi, my name is Tom from Genius Gecko, and this is Big Picture in 5 Minutes. In this episode, we are going to be talking about basic tasks. What is a basic task? Basic task is something that is an exception kind of in Big Picture, because most of the time when I'm explaining what Big Picture is and how it's connected with Jira, I'm telling you that everything that Big Picture is working with actually has its place or origin in Jira itself, which means that um, whenever you do something in Big Picture, it also changes things basically in Jira too. But there are some exceptions and basic tasks are one of them. So how do you use basic tasks? What are they good for? And how you can benefit from having them in your project plan? Should you use them or maybe they are not so recommended? So this is what we're going to be talking about today. Now, to create a basic task, you bas I basically select this uh, element so that I can get a basic task underneath and I'll go here, create task, and instead of Jira issue, I'm going to choose basic task over here. And as you can see, I just have to provide the name and specify the start and end date, okay? So, our first basic task, that's what we're going to call it, and we're just going to hit create. It's a one day long task, it's been created over here, if I want to now, I can extend its duration freely, no problem at all. And as you can see, it's displayable on the Gantt, just like any other Jira issue that we have over here, right? But you will notice some differences. So, for example, despite having the name and, of course, start and end date, which I'm not currently displaying over here, you can see that the basic task doesn't have an estimate, it doesn't have a time tracking, it doesn't have an assignee assigned to it, and it will also not have many other things because basic task is not a Jira issue. It's just something that is now created on the level of big picture only. Jira has no idea that we've created this task whatsoever. And uh, the only thing that we can keep on the level of those basic tasks right now is name, start, and end date, okay? So that's something definitely to remember. Now, uh, what else can you do with basic tasks? Well, you can move them up or down, you can stack them into the hierarchy just like with any other entries on a Gantt over here. I mean entries and not specifically Jira issues because of course the same thing will happen with for example components, versions, sprints that can also be visualized over here. Jira projects, right, as well. So that means that if I go over here and say create a subtask and a basic task then it will be a subtask basic task, so to say and it will appear underneath our first basic task as a subtask. We can see it now over here. The duration of our parent got shortened because we are using the, the, the automatic mode, but if I extend the child now, then the parent will also extend. And you can see clearly now that both of them uh, are connected as a parent-child relationship. Again, this relationship will only be visible over here in Big Picture. You can see it, for example, by uh, having this non-clickable issue key, right? So all the other keys I can click and I can go to the issue details, not for basic tasks, right? They are not clickable. All right, so why would you use basic tasks then, right? If, if, if they are so limited in terms of their functionality, you can't store any more information on the level of your basic tasks, why would you even consider using them? Well, during the training programs that we have, I usually, I always teach that if you have a choice, if you have any kind of doubts, you shouldn't use basic tasks. That's because once you use them, and it's been true uh, for a very long time, it's not that easy to go back from your basic task to standard Jira issue, right? If you want to replace them, especially if you build a hierarchy around your basic tasks. Now it's actually changed. That's partly why we are recording this video because it's a good opportunity to highlight that. So um, before I go into this, I'll first explain what are basic tasks actually pretty okay for. I'm not saying they are better than Jira issue, I'm saying that it's okay to use basic tasks for these purposes. And I've got two, I've got two. So the first thing is basic tasks can work pretty okay as a roll-up element in your project hierarchy, in your work breakdown structure. So if you want to create a parent and you just want to roll things under that parent, this parent can be a basic task. So what I mean is, if I, for example, grab this and this, and I'll say indent, they will get indented under my basic task. 
uh, you will see that now by basic task extended its duration quite significantly to um, capture all the items that are underneath it, right? So I have this and this and this and this, right? Currently in my family. I, I, I might highlight them over here. It will be a little bit easier to uh, see it. Oops, I, I went to hit shift, I hit control. Right, there we go. That's our family highlighted on the gun. So now you will see that the summaries are actually appearing even on the level of the basic task. It's not a Jira issue, but the summaries are still here. So if you have some time tracking information over here, and I don't have any, which is maybe not that great, but we can inline edit and, for example, say that this is a one day long task. There you go. You will see that this information will be summed up on the level of the parent as long as I have the proper aggregation turned on in the column. There we go, I do, I do have it, right? And if we would have any kind of progress over here, it would also be shown. So let me demonstrate that as well. I will grab this task, we will move it down one, two, three, four times, and indent it, I'm doing it with my keyboard, that's why you don't see me clicking anywhere. And now this task is also indented under my basic task, and now the progress on my basic task it's showing something, right? It's showing something because it's showing the progress from all the children. So if you want to have just an aggregating element that, you know, for example, might signify the phases in your, in your project, like analysis, development, tests, and so on, it's okay to have it. But remember that you won't be able to put any information on that task. It will be able to aggregate that information, okay? So if you're interested just in aggregating, it might be okay. Another thing that you might want to consider using basic tasks for is as a placeholder. So let's say that in your project plan you have the flow of tasks and then somewhere in between you want to for example put a placeholder for let's say Christmas break. Right, everybody is leaving for a Christmas break, no work progress will be done during that time, but you don't want to have a gap in your in your project plan, you want to have something visually um, appearing over there, which is not a task for anyone, uh, but just a placeholder, right? Can you use a basic task for it? Yes, you can. Can you use a standard Jira issue for it? Yes, you also can, right? So that's why I, I always repeat that. Just don't use basic task if you really, for some reason, are not drawn magically to them, because you can replace them always with uh, Jira issues and they will work fine as well. Also, if you want to have a break in your project plan, then, for example, you might use the lag time on the dependencies. That will work too. But I'm not saying that you absolutely shouldn't be using basic tasks for this purpose. I've seen companies using it that way, and it's okay. It's okay. Now, the last thing um, I wanted to show you is when you right-click on the task, now you can also convert the basic task to Jira issue. Okay? So if you click this, you will be asked, which project the issue should go to, and in my case, it should go to the demo project. And if you hit next, you will be getting the screen of standard issue create screen. You can change or choose the issue type that you want to use. So let's select a task. You can change or modify the name if you want to. So subtask, basic task, converted to Jira issue. That's what we want. And I'll hit create and it's going to get created and now you can see that my subtask basic task converted to Jira issue is act an, an actual has it moved oh yes it has moved because I've created it in the wrong project I'm actually I forgot I'm using big picture free course box not the demo project box which now appeared over here but because of the scope definition of this box it is empty so we can't put anything over there um, therefore, let's make this one more time, convert to Jira issue, uh, big picture free course data, next, and this time I won't be changing the name anymore. Let's just wait a moment and observe this area. You can see that now it changed to a task icon, now it's a clickable key, issue key, so I can go there and read the details of it. Okay, so. Because you can convert now basic tasks to standard Jira tasks, Jira issues, I think it's uh, a little bit more better to use them now. I would still recommend to actually stick with Jira issues from the get-go so that you just don't confuse people with what is this in my project plan or in your project plan uh, and why can't I add a, a, an assignee to it, for example. Yeah, so 
mm, this is my take on basic tasks. This is what they are good for. And this is why you should be a little bit cautious about using them. But I'll repeat again, there's nothing wrong with doing it. Uh, I mean, using them as long as you know what you're doing and you're doing it on purpose. Thanks a lot for watching and listening. See you in the next video.